Hi, we're back again. I'm Josh Vandere on Ansible for Network Automation, and today we're going to explore configuring quality of service a little bit more and roles. So in this, we're going to have some Ansible configuration done, verification, and take a look at roles as well. At the end of the session, we'll see how to set up a new role and how to use a role in a playbook while we're configuring things on the fly to see network validation happening. So first off, let's talk about roles just a little bit further. Roles load items only during the duration of the load of the role. So we'll take a look at the file structure a little bit later, but you're able to do a playbook and then include a role and then it loads the information necessary and then unloads it once the role is complete. So this helps a little bit more with separation of tasks. And Ansible Galaxy is a repository of the roles. And so within that, we get some sharing that's capable, very similar to a package repository or a Docker repository. And then we have roles that get published to be shared. We take a look at a little bit earlier session where we took a look at the Galaxy web page. And then new and upcoming in Ansible 2.9 is collections, which is going to be a little bit bigger than just a role, but it also includes playbooks, modules, and plugins as well, all in one. So as we get into this configuration that we're going to be doing, we're going to have a host that's up in the cloud, hanging out uh, machine, that's reaching out into the DC Ubuntu 01 server. That server has an IP address. We've configured base quality of service, and right now it's showing up in a queue that we don't want it to be in. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate it, make sure that it is what we see. We'll take a look at the show policy map, and then we'll go ahead and configure across the board the new policy for quality of service to be able to show how it can be changed. We'll wait a short bit to see the traffic that's still happening and that we see the traffic flow into a whole new queue. With that, Let's go ahead and take a look at full configuration verification of quality service and leveraging roles. We're back at our terminal here. Let's take a look at the folder structure before we get started. And we'll go ahead and scroll up a little bit first. We have our pieces that look very familiar with our Ansible config, our group vars, host vars. Our roles directory is looking very much so expanded. We've got a few more things in there. We notice here that we've got our data center routers QoS is the name of the role that was given. And it's got defaults, handlers, meta tasks, templates, tests, and vars as subfolders. Notice that we have main.yaml quite a bit. So when you're working with roles and we want to load variables, instead of having variables in another file, it's in the main.yaml that's in the vars folder. And then same with the tasks. Tasks are what get executed. Continues up here, we've got our defaults and our handlers. Handlers, again, are pieces that get called based on execution. And then it's got its own sub-templates folder. So these templates are only available to the role. And this is very helpful as you get into putting roles into Ansible Galaxy. And it does not need to be the actual Ansible Galaxy main public. You can have your own private Ansible Galaxy repository. A new file that we're going to be calling during our playbook execution here is site.yaml. We'll take a look at that playbook here in a short bit after we do another in initiation here. So taking a look at what it takes to create a role and the folder structure that is in associated with it. First we're going to go into our roles directory and then Ansible has given us a handy command of Ansible Galaxy init and then we give it our test role name. So when that happens, it goes ahead and creates the folder structure. We see our test roles one, where it's created our defaults with our main and all the directories and all the files that are associated within there. Notice here a readme.md. If you're not familiar with that, that's where you can go ahead and create documentation around your item that you're working on in this. So if you're working on a playbook, it, there's if there's a readme file, it's typically about the readme. In this case, it's a readme and it's going to give documentation around the role, how to execute it, what variables need to be set, those types of things. So the readme.md, md being for markdown, is a very important file to look at and understand for documentation. Now that we've seen how to make our Galaxy folders structure, let's take a look at the playbook that we're going to be working on today. So as we look at our playbook one, 
We've got our var file, which has our files and our secret information for connecting to the device. First one we're going to do task one is we're going to check the current bandwidth. So I want to show the show policy map interface, uh, gig03, and that's going to be done on all the routers in the data center. Could really just be done on one as that's where this work is going to be executed and where we'll show. Task two is we're going to show that output for router three, and then we're going to pause just a few seconds so that way we can see that data, see what that value is between the various class maps. Task three, we're going to go ahead and include the roles. So this says go into the roles and execute the main.yaml file in the tasks folder. And we'll take a look at that immediately before we run here. At which point we'll wait for 30 seconds because that will go ahead and change the quality of service setup. And then we'll show the output again. And then we'll do another uh, post check output so that way we can see what that looks like. Let's take a look at the execution that happens within the roles. We're calling our roles, it's going into the data center routers QoS folder and looking at tasks and main.yaml. So, first off, task one, we configure our default web ACL, which is, this is getting some information from the variables folder. That's the lines there, QoS underscore default underscore web. We'll take a look at that in a brief moment here. Notice that there's the parents, which is the IP access list extended and the access list name, and the before, where we have a no IP access list. That's basically saying that as we process these lines, you're actually processing the access list lines. Before you execute this, if it needs to be changed, that it will go ahead and leave it in place if you don't have a change. But if a change is needed, you'll have to do the no beforehand. And then task two has much the same. Task three and task four are lookups and templates to configure the interface and class map to make sure everything is good. And then task five, we're going to take a look at the change that's actually being implemented. So that way you can see what was sent down the SSH channel. Now taking a look at the roles. So in here, this looks awfully familiar, I would believe, for anyone that's worked with iOS and Access List. We've got our variable name, QoS Default Web, and QoS Priority Web. Those are two different variables that we've seen called in the previous main task list. And then we've got our Access List lines. So the default web, permit IP and any. So basically you're looking for anything else left. And then our QoS Priority Web is permit TCP any host to the host in there of 203.0.113.20 on port 80 for www. And then we have the inverse. All right, so what we're gonna do is we've actually found that there's no traffic in the queue that we want. And in talking to the web server, it's, it doesn't actually use port 80, it uses port 8000. So we'll go ahead and go in to our file here and we'll change it from www to port 80. Save that, and now we're going to go ahead and take a look at this playbook execution. And we're doing site.yaml. And then we have to ask our vault password because we are going through and getting files out of the password vault. And then as we go here, we're going to get our checking the first bandwidth. We see that there's no bytes in class one, but there is some traffic on class two of 4,500 bits per second there. So now we're going to go ahead and continue through. Task two is changing the quality of service configuration on the devices. Verified the others are all set. And now here are the commands that were sent down. It got rid of that access list of the priority web, and then it redeployed it with the new proper configuration. We're going to just wait here a short bit to allow the traffic counters to show what they need to show. All right, now it's going through. It's going to do the show output again. And now we show that class one has 3,500 bits per second happening. Class two still has a little bit of traffic and they're just coming down. It's, it is 30 seconds and the, time, the counters may not have cleared. So that shows the ability to change your configuration and then verify with output that the changes are successful. Let's go ahead and wrap up here. To review what we accomplished today, we demonstrate how to build the folder structure of a role using Ansible Galaxy in the init subcall. We changed quality of service of traffic on a live lab network, traffic that was in progress. We moved one traffic for port 8000 out of the default queue with any any into a queue for class one 
capturing more traffic. And we saw that move using verification and show commands to see that the QoS did in fact change. And we also showed the output of the commands using debugs. 